Welcome back. Uh, in this lesson, we will continue with the topic on uh, differential calculus. Uh, we will extend this a bit for the higher level student. Uh, in particular, in this lesson, we'll be talking about uh, implicit differentiation. Uh, so to start the discussion, uh, I want us to think about this uh, question here. We'll consider this as our opening question. Why is it that uh, uh, the derivative of x cubed with respect to x, in other words, if we differentiate x cubed with respect to x, we get 3x squared. But if we differentiate y cubed with respect to x, we will get 3y squared, but there will be a residue dy by dx, like that. Okay? So why is this the case? All right? In other words, the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared, while the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is 3y squared dy by dx. Why does the derivative of y cubed leave a residue, while the derivative of x cubed does not leave a residue? So we want to understand this uh, in order for us to uh, solve uh, questions relating to implicit differentiation. Sometimes when we understand where stuff come from, it becomes easier to remember them uh, uh, over a long period of time after a topic has been taught. So let's see, let's answer this question. Go back, we want to go back and see where this comes from. I already mentioned this in, uh, I think, Unit 5, uh, Lesson 5.12. Uh, uh, I mentioned that we will be talking about this, and uh, now let's go into it and see what, uh, where this comes from. And by the way, uh, the WRT there implies with respect to. So we are saying the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared, while the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is 3y squared dy by dx. All right, so in uh, lesson uh, 5.12, please go back to that lesson, it's just a few videos uh, before this one. Uh, in this lesson, we used the idea of uh, a point of diminishing diameter like this, and we used this to show that if that diameter is small enough, then we can use that uh, to find the gradient of, the, of a point. So if that diameter becomes very, very tiny, tiny enough like that, then we can blow that up into a circle. So this is just that point there, but blown up. So if the diameter is small enough, then uh, the point that is passing through the circle or the line that is passing through the circle is going to appear straight like that. And so we can use that straight line to determine the gradient at that point. So this is basically referring to point P there. All right. So if we pick a very, very, if we allow the diameter to be very, very small, then the curve F of X will now appear as a straight line around that point. Please go and check that video uh, to see how we uh, worked with this. And so we can find the gradient of this line by picking two points at the ends of our point P, like that. So if we pick that point and find the X coordinate on the X axis, all right? Find the X coordinate on the X axis. We can find the Y coordinate by taking that value of X and substituting into the function. So if we put that there, we'll get the Y coordinate there to be X cubed. Similarly, we can find the coordinate of uh, this point here. So if this diameter is small enough, then that distance, this distance to this point is going to be very small. Let that distance be delta X. If that distance is delta x, then the x-coordinate of this point is going to be x plus delta x, and consequently the y-coordinate there is going to be x plus delta x cubed, like that. Hmm? So we already, we already did this, just look at it back. And so we end up with a change in y and a change in x, all right, where the change in y, the, the second value of y, or what you might refer to as y2, is x plus delta x uh, cubed, all right? Now we can uh, draw a triangle here and use that triangle to determine the gradient of that line. So basically, it's just the change in y over the change in x, 
all right, which is also the same as saying y2 minus y1 divide by x2 minus x1, like that. And so the gradient at point P is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if we write this, it becomes, so the gradient is going to be the limit, it's going to be the limit as the diameter becomes smaller. In other words, as delta x tends to zero, and of course delta y is also tending to zero if this diameter is becoming smaller, so the limit as delta x and delta y tends to zero, if we look for the gradient, that is going to give us the derivative of this function at the point P. Okay, so this is how we reasoned in lesson uh, 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 topic 5.12. So if we do that, then we can, uh, by just substituting the value of y2 and y1, and x2 minus x1 is going to give us delta x. So x2 there minus x1 leaves us with delta x only. So we can use this to determine the gradient of the function x cubed at point P. All right. So what do we do now? All we need to do is to open this bracket. If we open the bracket, we end up with, this is a, a power 3, so we expect to have four terms, the first term being x cubed, the next one being 3x squared delta x, uh, the third term being 3x delta x squared, and the fourth term being uh, uh, delta x cubed. This is just, uh, you can use Pascal's triangle if you can't do it straight away, but generally an HL student should be fine with this now. And then, of course, we have to subtract the x cubed there. And once we've done that, we notice that the x cubed here is negative, and there is an x cubed there that is positive, so we can cancel the two right they cancel each other and we are left with the three terms in the middle and so let's simplify that so let's just have those three terms remaining in the middle and now what we want to do before I go on I want to split that into three fractions we know and sometimes I, I have to remind students that a plus b plus c if we divide by d that gives me a over d plus b over d plus c over d. So I can split up the fraction into three smaller fractions like that. And we're going to use the same idea to split our fraction here into three parts. If we do that, we end up with, we end up with 3x squared times delta x over delta x there. I'm going to write it like that, delta x over delta x, plus 3x delta x. We can write delta x squared over delta x, but eventually it's going to cancel out. Let's just see. All right, we can write that down. And then we're going to have plus delta x cubed over delta x, like that. And if we simplify this, we end up with this remains 3x squared delta x over delta x. Uh, the next one is 3x delta x alone, because this cancels with one of that. And this becomes delta x squared, like that. And now we remember uh, back, we go back to our uh, diminishing circle. And we know that as the diameter becomes smaller, delta x is becoming smaller, and so is delta y. And so as delta x becomes or approaches zero, this term is going to disappear because it's approaching zero. This term is also going to be to disappear as a small number squared is even smaller, so this is also going to disappear. So the second two terms are going to disappear, and we are going to be left with this one. Now, why is delta x not disappearing? Well, it's because although delta x is approaching zero, it's not zero, it's approaching zero, whatever it is, divide by itself is going to be one. So this will always be one, while these ones will tend to zero, okay? And so the result of this is to say that as delta x tends to zero, we're going to end up with just 3x squared, delta x over delta x, which is basically one. And so we know that the derivative, uh, so the derivative, the derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared delta x over delta x, which has disappeared. This is important. You notice this is delta x divided by delta x, and that's why it disappears. We don't have any residue appearing there. Now, we want to use this same idea to look at what happens if we wanted to differentiate y cubed with respect to x instead, right? So let's see how we do that. So we go back to the same point that was blown up. Uh, 
our point was we were differentiating uh, x cubed. We had this scenario where we picked two points on, uh, on at the ends of our point P and used this to find the gradient, except this time our function needs to be y cubed. So I'm going to remove x cubed and replace it with y cubed there. So if we remove x cubed and replace with y cubed, then it means at this point, this must also be y cubed, and this has to be x, uh, this is x plus delta x cubed, so it has to be y plus delta y cubed. Okay, so if we do that, and then use the same, same idea that we used before, the gradient is going to be the change in y over the change in x, and if we do that, now in place of uh, x plus delta x, we have y plus delta y cubed, and minus y cubed over delta x. If we expand this the same way we expanded the previous one, we end up with the first term is going to be y cubed, the second term is going to be 3y squared delta y, and the third term is going to be 3y delta y squared, uh, and the fourth term is going to be delta y cubed, like that. And then, of course, we have to subtract, we have to include this term there, minus y cubed, all right, and uh, uh, as you can see one more time, uh, y cubed positive appears uh, with a negative y cubed, so those two terms can cancel. And if we cancel that, we are left with three terms in the middle, which we can now try to simplify just like we did before. Those three terms are as given there. All right, and so if we divide by delta x the same way that we did earlier, splitting into three different fractions, we end up with uh, 3y squared delta y over delta x plus 3y delta y squared over delta x, and I can split delta y squared into delta y and delta y, so one goes with delta x, and I have one delta y uh, unassociated, all right? And then I'm going to add delta y cubed, which is also delta y over delta x times delta y cubed. Why am I doing this? Because I know delta y over delta x is never going to be zero because they get smaller, but they are of the same the same order of magnitude, and so when you divide them, you have something that is uh, closer, uh, um, that does not become zero. However, delta y by itself is approaching zero as delta, as delta x tends to zero, delta y also is approaching zero. And so this term here is going to disappear, and that term there, delta y squared, is even smaller than delta y, and so this term disappears together with that term there, and we are left with... Uh, uh, 3y squared, the limit as x tends to 0, of uh, 3y squared delta y by delta x. So this is what we are left with. And so the limit as delta x tends to 0, this is tending to become dy by dy, a true gradient, all right, just like before. But now we don't have a delta x appearing with a delta x instead because the numerator is a different uh, variable. And so we are left with delta y by delta x, and this is the derivative of y cubed with respect to x, okay? So you can see that when we differentiate y cubed, there is a, a residue that remains uh, behind because we cannot get rid of that delta y at the top, all right? And so the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared dy by dx. Let me just summarize this so you understand. If we are given a function f of x is x cubed and we want to differentiate it with respect to x, if we differentiate with respect to x, so x cubed differentiated with respect to x, so the same variable, we will end up with 3x squared. No big deal. But if we want to differentiate this with respect to something else, so suppose we want to differentiate it with respect to t, all right? If we differentiate this x cubed with respect to t and not x instead, then there has to be a residue. So we will get our normal 3x squared, just like that, but there is a residue now because we cannot, uh, uh, while this one was delta x by delta x, this is going to be delta x by delta t, which cannot cancel off, and so we have to add that residue there, okay? Similarly, if uh, a function of y is y squared, 
if we differentiate that with respect to y, so d by dy of that function, that will just give us 2y, dy, dy by dy, which cancels out. But if we differentiate that with respect to something else, like x or t, all right? So if we differentiate the same y squared with respect to x, now we will have our 2y just like before, but we will have a delta y by delta x that cannot cancel out in the, like in this case, and therefore there is going to be a residue dy by dx. Okay. Similarly, if we have a function in terms of t, e to the power of 2t, regular differentiation will give us, if we differentiate with respect to t there, if we differentiate with respect to t, then we will have normal differentiation is 2e two, uh, two power 2t, dt by dt, which cancels off. But if we differentiate this same same function, but now with respect to something else, let's say s, some new variable s, then we will get the same result there as that, but there will be uh, a residue which is going to be dt by ds there like that. Okay, this information is crucial if you are going to uh, solve some of uh, uh, equations that are implicit and we are going to understand what implicit functions are. Okay, implicit functions, implicit equations, or implicit uh, relations. Okay, so let's uh, see you in the next uh, video where we now introduce uh, explicit versus implicit uh, functions. Okay, thank you and uh, see you shortly.